Hey guys, my name is Jack. I make tech and tech accessory reviews. Welcome to the channel. I love shooting with my iPhone. It's the camera that I always have with me. And I really like using mobile lenses that enhance or allow me to shoot in new ways. We've looked at some here on the channel before. And Sam Mark reached out to me and they asked if I'd like to test out some of theirs. And a few of you guys have been commenting and asking about their lenses too. So of course I said yes. But just to say, this is not a sponsored video. I'm free to say what's good and what's bad about them. And as always, I'll be giving them a fair and honest review. But with that said, if you do decide you want to get some of this gear for yourself, there'll be links to everything in the description below. And Sam Mark have provided a discount code for all of you guys watching. You can get 10% off your order with code JCKRGB10 at the checkout. So they sent me a tele and a macro lens, a case to mount them to, and a polarizing filter along with some filter mounts. Now, they do make some other filters as well, and they are updating all of their other lenses, the anamorphic, the wide, and the fisheye, for the 14 Pro's cameras too. And they did say that they'd send me those once they're available, so definitely get subscribed to the channel if you want to see those tested as well. So let's take a quick look at the Sandmark case first, and then we'll take a look at the lenses. This is their Pro case. It comes in black. It's made from a sort of rubberized plastic, so it has a nice grip to it. They do also make a leather version of this if that's more your style in black, navy, and teal. The case covers all of the buttons with a slight lip around the front of the screen for some front glass protection. On the left side, there are these two small holes for threading through a lanyard or a wrist strap. Plus the case has a ring of magnets in the back so you can use it with all of your favorite MagSafe accessories. Now, Sandmark's lens mounting system over the cameras is a bit different to Moment's. Moment uses a plastic mount on the case with metal on their lenses. But here, Sandmark's mounting system is all metal. The mount plate over the cameras is made from aluminium, so it's strong and durable, and it uses a screw-on system instead of a bayonet mount like Moments. This is Sandmark's 58mm tele. The lens itself feels really well constructed. It has a metal body with glass lens elements, weighing in at about 84 grams. It's got a real solid build to it. On the back for mounting, there's a thread for screwing it onto the Sandmark case. Now, I will say that it is a little bit more difficult to mount versus Moment's bayonet mount. You kind of have to find the thread point when you're screwing it on. But once it's mounted, it feels way more secure than Moment's lenses. These have a really tight fit. Oh, and the back of the screw mount is padded, by the way, too. So you're not going to scratch your camera lens glass. I've been really impressed when I've been out shooting with this lens. We'll take a look at some photos and some videos in just a sec. But some of you might be wondering... What's even the point of using a tele lens on the iPhone at all? The pro iPhones have a telephoto camera built in, right? Well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, the main camera on the iPhone pretty much always tends to be the best camera. It has a larger aperture for letting more light onto the sensor for better low light photos. And with the new 14 Pros, it has a much larger sensor that can now shoot 48 megapixel stills for even more detailed shots versus the native 12 megapixel tele camera. Or you might have one of the standard iPhone 14 or 13s that don't have a tele camera at all. And Sandmark does make lenses for these phones as well. Sandmark's tele is a 58mm equivalent, so you end up with about a two times magnification on the main camera. So this is how it stacks up versus the 1X on its own and the native 3X. It sits quite nicely in the middle. You can also mount this lens over the 3X tele camera and get a pretty impressive 6x zoom. But I would say only do this if you're shooting on a tripod or something steady as even just like the slightest camera movements at this zoom can result in some blurry shots that are out of focus. And if we dim the lights in this scene, you can see how that tele lens over the main camera ends up producing a brighter image than the built-in telephoto with locked camera settings. The back wall is brighter, as are the lenses that are sitting on the shelf. As I've been out testing this, I think my favourite thing about it has to be the shallow depth of field you get behind any sort of foreground or midground subjects. The new big sensor on the 14 Pro's main camera already produces a really nice background blur, and the Sandmark Tele just kind of enhances it and makes it even more pronounced. It looks really nice. Just look at some of these shots. They almost look like they were shot on a much larger mirrorless or a DSLR camera. It's a great lens for bringing focus to a subject, quite literally. The lighting was really nice when I shot these. The sun was really low. And with this lens, I think I managed to capture some really great shots. Just to mention, I used the Halo app to capture these. And you will need to use a third-party camera app that lets you force which camera you're shooting with. 
The built-in camera app kind of doesn't really like when there's something mounted on the lens and it might try to switch to a different camera. So I'll link to some apps in the description. And you might have noticed a lot of these stills are 48 megapixel ProRaw shots, something that just isn't possible with the native tele camera. And there's so much detail in these shots, like again here in this leaf shot, or this one with the moss on the log, it just looks so good. When shooting video, this lens really shines too. I shot these clips in Filmic Pro so I had manual focus control. And again, you get that really nice shallow depth of field shot on DSLR look. I also think that that 58mm focal length really makes the footage shot on your iPhone look a lot more cinematic. The way that it compresses the foreground and the background. For stills or videos, this lens is great. For the most part, it produces really crisp images. There have been a couple of times where I've seen some sort of weird optical effects, like some highlight smearing at the edges, like you can see here. And I did wipe my camera to make sure that it was clean. And sometimes I did find it a bit tricky to focus on subjects way off in the distance. This lens definitely seems more suited to foreground and mid-ground subjects in my testing. The iPhone camera was never designed to work with external lenses like this, so I wouldn't expect them to work flawlessly. But nonetheless, this lens performs better than Moment's telelens. Images from it look sharper with less overall ghosting around the edges of things. Comparing the two, you can see how much bigger the Sandmark is, which I think is what allows it to work better with the 14 Pro's bigger camera and sensor. And overall, I'm just really impressed by the images and the videos from it. They have a really nice aesthetic to them and it's just a ton of fun to shoot with. Next up, this is Sandmark's 10x macro lens. And again, it has a really solid build quality here with an aluminium body and glass lens elements. This one weighs a little lighter at 25 grams and it screws onto the case just like the telephoto. The iPhone has had a really good built-in macro mode for a couple of years now using the ultra-wide camera and cropping in to get closer to the subject. But using this macro lens over the main camera again has some benefits. Better low light performance, high resolution pro roll shots, and that really nice shallow depth of field that really allows you to bring attention to the subject of the image. You get this really nice natural blur roll off with the macro lens versus the iPhone's macro mode where pretty much everything in the frame is in focus. And I really love using this lens for getting these up close nature shots. You can easily turn some of these into some of your own wallpapers. They just look so good. That depth of field is really shallow though. So you do need a steady hand when shooting, but if you're into your macro photography, you can really capture some impressive shots with it. Just look at all the detail in these 48 megapixel Pro Raw shots. Plus video too, you can absolutely shoot 4K video and get right up close to your subject. And there's no way currently to shoot video with the iPhone's built-in macro mode. You can also mount it over the tele camera and get even closer still, way closer than the built-in macro mode. I managed to capture some of these shots handheld, but again, be prepared with a tripod or something to keep your hand steady at this extreme level of zoom. Macro lenses are a lot of fun to shoot with. It's like a whole new world. You can get pretty experimental with them. I captured these stills and videos using the Halide and Filmic Pro app so I could manually lock which camera I was shooting with. But again, there are loads of other third-party camera apps out there, so comment below if there's any you'd like to recommend. Both of these lenses come with a zip-up carry pouch, and inside that there's a carabiner clasp for attaching it to a backpack. They also then come with a second pouch, and inside that there's a clip for attaching the lens directly to your phone if you don't have the case. But I would recommend using the case just to make sure that the lenses are lined up perfectly and you're not covering the front of your screen. And finally, we have the lens itself. They both come with a lens cap on the front and one on the back too, which is really nice to have included in the box. That will help stop any dust getting on the rear glass. And with the macro lens, you also get this diffusion hood, which also helps with focusing as the hood is the same size as the focal length when you're pressed against something flat like this brick wall here. Samark also sent me their drama filter. This is a circular polarizer or a CPL filter. You can mount it directly to the tele lens by screwing it on, or they also have an adapter for mounting it directly to the case over the main or tele camera. This filter rotates, and what this does is it helps to reduce and remove some of the reflections in your shots on glass or on water. Like here, looking into the car, there's a haze on the windscreen, but as I turn the filter, those reflections get reduced and you can see much clearly through the glass. It's a pretty cool tool to have when you're shooting. 
They did send me this clip too for mounting, but because it's open at the back, you might get some light leaking or reflections on the filter. So I definitely recommend going with the filter adapter instead. Overall, I've been really impressed by these Samark lenses. I love to shoot video and take stills on my iPhone. It's pretty much the main thing that I use my phone for. And the results from these lenses, I think, have been pretty amazing on my 14 Pro Max. So if you are someone that is looking to level up your iPhone photography and video, I think these are well worth checking out. There is, of course, no way of knowing if they'll still be compatible with any future iPhones. Apple could just completely change the camera system, so that is something to be aware of. And I will be testing out the rest of Samark's lenses once they've sent them to me. So that's the anamorphic, the wide, and the fisheye. So be sure to hit subscribe and the bell if you want to see that video. And remember, you can use the links in the description with code JCKRGB10 and get 10% off your order if you'd like to check these out for yourself. Thanks to Samark for sending me these to review. You can hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Drop a comment below if you've got any questions. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.